this is Roy Canning. And this is Robert Newman. And today we're going to be taking a look at Lords of Middle-Earth. Boom. Lords of Middle-Earth is an expansion to the War of the Ring thematic war game set in the Lord of the Rings universe, where there's all sorts of new leaders added into your pool of leaders you can recruit. There are new character cards included for each one of the original Fellowship characters that can allow you to be more warlike with them or also help you to reduce corruption. There are also rules for starting companions outside of the Fellowship. You could start Boromir and Gondor or the Hobbits Merry and Pippin in the Shire, but the Sauron player will get some bonuses of being able to move a party down the political track or be able to move Nazgul at the beginning of the game as well. You also have the Keepers of the Elven Rings, which can add bonus dice to your pool. You can start with Gandalf the Grey, bring in Lady Galadriel, or bring Lord Elrond to the battle. You'll be able to roll these dice if you've brought that character into play, but you only get to keep one of the three Keepers of the Rings dice on each turn. Ring tokens also have all new abilities. Gandalf can take free people's factions to war, Lady Galadriel can redraw hunt tiles if it shows an eye, and Elrond can let you keep a action die that you've already used. The game also comes with miniatures to represent Gandalf the White and Aragorn after you've upgraded him from Strider. These replace the cardboard tokens that come in the original game and make your game look that much better. The Free People's player also gets lesser minions and dice that come with them. The Balrog can be used to hinder the Fellowship going through Moria, and can be used to lead armies in attacks once activated with his dice. And Gothmog can be used to lead armies if the Witch King is not out on the board. Also new versions of the Witch King, focusing more on corruption as he follows the Fellowship around the board, and the Mouth of Sauron who can lead armies. When using the Lesser Rings action die, if Gandalf the White is in play and you ever roll the star remove symbol, they will be removed after using them for the rest of the game. Likewise with the Lesser Minion dice with the Witch King. If he's in play, the dice will be removed after the star symbol is rolled. All of these new characters and leaders come with beautifully sculpted miniatures that can really enhance the theme of the game. At the start of the game, if you choose Smeagol to be used, you'll put two of his tiles in the hunt bag. These tiles, when they come up, will be zero damage for the corruption, and you'll add Smeagol to the party. Even event cards that add more Smeagol tiles to the bag, which still just do zero hunt damage. Smeagol is always the guide of the Fellowship as long as he is in the Fellowship. Smeagol is ever separated from the party or taken as a casualty the Shadow Player puts the We Shall Get It card in play, which allows them to redraw hunt tiles to try to catch those sneaky hobbitses. Lords of Middle-Earth lets you play all sorts of different lords and different characters and different versions of those characters to mix up your War of the Ring game. There are beautifully crafted models, and they can really make the game diverge from the regular narrative of the books, and you can play out the story in your own way. So I think Lords of Middle-Earth is definitely a super exciting expansion. I really like all the leaders and dice and stuff that it adds into it. Um, what do you think about like the extra dice it adds into the game with the lesser dice? I think adding the extra dice is critical, especially if you're going to be playing as the free people uh, uh -huh. because you only start off with a handful of dice anyway, yeah. whereas uh, the, uh, the shadow player gets a ton of dice. So I really liked it. Um, this is probably... Uh, my favorite of the expansions. We won't get in the other one, but uh, I really like the extra dice and the leaders mm -hmm. that it had. Yeah, I like the fact that if you choose the other, there's one Gandalf. If you choose the regular Gandalf from the base set, you get to oh, get extra yeah. event cards. If you choose the other Gandalf, you get extra dice. Yep. So normally, like in the game, you're trying to rush to kill Gandalf as fast as possible to get yep. the extra dice. If you have the other Gandalf that gives you one, you don't necessarily have to try to push for Gandalf the White as soon, and you still get an extra die. Well, and you also get this awesome, cool mini with this expansion. You know, because the regular War of the Ring doesn't come yeah. with the cool mini uh, Gandalf the White. And I'm a mini fan. I Definitely. like plastic. 
And this is such a cool looking figure. Yeah, you end up just having like a little little tokens. When Gandalf turns to Gandalf the White, oh, you put a little Gandalf the White token under him. Or, oh, Aragorn turns into Aragorn, you just put a little Aragorn token. Now you have Aragorn riding on a horse and Gandalf the White on a horse with his big staff. And He's those miniatures look great. Um, what do you think about like the lesser minions? Since I was playing the Shadow in this place, I brought the Balrog out, smashed Lorien. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> it was tough. Um, the Balrog really changed a lot of my strategy of what I was going to do. I planned yeah, yeah. on running with the Fellowship. Um, right through Lorien from the get-go and try to get down to the uh, Mount Doom as quickly as possible. But I think it was like your first or second turn, just boom, Balrog came to play. Um, and I love the consequences, too, of bringing in Balrog. Yeah, yeah. If I had to move my, my group through there, there's a chance that Gandalf does die, which is not terrible because you need Gandalf the Grey to die to bring out Gandalf the White. But um, it definitely made it more thematic and it made it more hesitant on my part because uh -huh. there are more consequences now that he was into play i just i really like all the leaders and everything also when you bring out the balrog it immediately moves the dwarves and the elves down the, the political track and so you I, get an extra die right and i get an like extra die. you need more dice <laughs> yeah the, the uh the the shadow player always has way more dice than the free peoples in this game it always feels like you're behind the bullet on it but, yes uh, it's oh yeah. oh it's your turn again oh I'm out of no it's it's your turn again I'm, I'm out of dice no wait yeah. keep going I'm still out of dice but yeah um and it's got the whole schmiegel tile thing where you can add extra tiles into the thing I think that's probably the more that we talked about it after playing yeah, yeah. I actually probably like that the most I think it's the most balanced card that were to come out because schmiegel allows you as the fellowship player to add in two more schmiegel dice into the bag into the bag um, pulling out the corruption that's a really big deal however if you pull out a schmiegel die schmiegel now becomes your leader and so there's kind of some give and take with that you don't like him as your right. leader but and you definitely don't want to kill him off because there's a card that specifically makes it better for the shadow yeah. players if he dies off. So it's kind of like this whole thing of trying to figure out how well you can do a Schmeagle and stuff. And it's really important when you get to the Cracks of Doom. Yes. I was when they're like, that. oh man, I just need to do like two or three more damage and they, they're corrupted. Yeah. And you pull that Schmeagle tile out of there and you're just like... Well, yeah, I guess that's the game. It's yeah, really for good. us in our game, it didn't work so well in my favor because I got the Schmeagle tile from the get go. Um, but I still think the balance of that, of what it brings and not having the corruption, mm -hmm. it is well worth it. Um, gotcha. Really, really enjoyed that card. They've also changed up the Elven Rings, and you can um, use the Gandalf one to activate cities. You can yep. use the, the Galadriel one to make it so that a... Um, a eyeball um, pull from the hunt tile um, makes it so that you don't get as much corruption. You yep. basically just discard that one and draw another one so it can make your odds better and that's really good when you're at the cracks of doom if she lives that long. If um, and then the Elrond one does some other stuff too. So there's just all these different things that can go on. He allows you, all your elite guys become um, leaders as well. Basically the same way that Sar these guys are with him are leaders. Yeah, the wall rods. He makes these yeah. guys into leaders. Yep. So it's it's really cool. I feel like this allows you to do a little bit more combaty stuff with like your leaders, and you can maybe muster a little bit more stuff. But um, but yeah, um, any final thoughts? I I first of all I love War of the Ring. It's such yeah, a yeah. fantastic game. It's Lord of the Rings in the box. I think the expansions, both of them, do a great job. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Lords of Middle Earth. Um, does a fantastic job bringing in more characters mm -hmm. into the game and giving it more of that Lord of the Rings feel. It gives um, you a lot of what ifs in the game because you can play oh, the original yeah. game and it's like you're sticking to the main story for the most part. Oh, the Fellowship's trying to get down here and do yeah. that. It adds like, well, what if the Balrog started attacking Lorien? Or what if uh, Galadriel was like trying to use her powers to try to help the Fellowship out? Or what yeah. if Elrond was trying to lead an army to do some stuff? So it, it gives you some more options um, throughout the game. So that's pretty cool oh yeah I, I i highly recommend this one for me i would say two thumbs up i guess if we're making that a thing <laughs> i'm not gonna make that a thing okay good um i just highly recommend it and it makes the game that much better an already great game and even greater game but yeah take a chance i know war of the ring has a lot of rules and a lot of instructions so i was hesitant to like add this to my game at first but if you played the game a couple times it's definitely a great addition so make yeah, sure i don't check think out... it complicated things too much not too bad at all make sure to check out war of the ring lords of middle earth Thanks so much for checking out our review of Lords of Middle-Earth. Make sure to leave a comment down below what your favorite character from Lord of the Rings is, and we'll make sure to reply and check out those comments. And make sure to hit us up on all of our social media. We'll see you guys next time.
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.